Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode in our TNA What If series in TW 2020. We are on the Go Home week for Victory Road. Uh, Victory Road happening this Sunday. Um, and uh, we've got a lot of stuff already booked for the show. Including the TNA world title on the line. Sean Benjamin defending against Jeff. Or again, Jeff. Against James Storm. Why well, I started saying Jeff. Um, we also have the X Division Championship on the line. Is Jimmy Ch as a boy? I'm all over the place right now with who is in matches. As Jay Lethal is defending the title against Colt Cabana, we have the Knockouts title on the line as Velvet Sky defends against ODB, and we also have official for that show AJ Styles versus D'Angelo De Niro. And so much more. We're going to find out more as this show goes on here. Um, and we'll kind of talk about some of the other matches that are also happening on that show. We start things off in front of 4,806 people in the Augusta Civic Center in Augusta, Maine. With the beatdown crew in the ring. As a... Uh, Gets 75 here. Uh, Benjamin struggled when going off script, but everybody else did pretty good here. Or everybody else I was talking anyway. As MVP says that uh, the time has come this weekend. It's time for Victory Road, where three of these men in the ring will defeat their opponents with ease and prove that the beatdown crew are here to stay in TNA. Uh, then... Sheldon Benjamin's, uh, or not Sheldon, not sorry, not Sheldon, uh, D'Angelo De Niro's first. And he says that he's heard all the hype about AJ Styles. He's seen his matches. He's seen everything. He's heard about how the last time the two of them met in the ring for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship, AJ Styles beat him. He doesn't care. That was a different time. That was a different era. This is now. He's part of the beatdown crew. He is part of a bigger thing now and that he is going to beat AJ Styles. And prove that he is truly the the greatest Pope that's ever lived. Because now he's trying to steal Austin Aries, uh, at least part of Austin Aries' uh, nickname since he beat him last month. Then Eddie Kingston gets the microphone. And he says, you know, uh, obviously in an Eddie Kingston way. But he's, he said, basically says, you know, Joe's been sitting here calling me out. And now I find out that it's official. I gotta go one-on-one -on -one with Samoa Joe at Victory Road. You know what? I'm not scared of that punk ass bitch. I'm not scared of him. You think I'm scared of that Samoan guy? No. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to step right up to his face in the ring and I'm going to knock his ass out. And if anybody and then everybody can be in complete shock about the fact that I just knocked out the former TNA World Heavyweight Champion and proved that the beatdown crew are here to stay. You know, obviously a slightly different way that that he, he would say it if it was Eddie Kingston speaking. And then Sheldon Benjamin gets the microphone. And he says that this Sunday he makes another successful title defense over James Storm. He says that James Storm, for a cup of coffee, was a TNA world champion back in the day. But uh, him, and his, him and his bro, Bobby Roode, have been having a little bit of falling out lately. And Bobby might not even be there for the match this Sunday. Who the heck knows? Maybe he'll be there. Maybe he won't. Who knows? But uh, he doesn't really care if Bobby Roode's there or not. Because he knows that he's better than than that cowboy. He knows he's better than James Storm. He knows he can beat him. And he's going to do so this Sunday at Victory Road. So there you go. 75 rating. As uh, the beatdown crew kind of, you know, making it clear that they plan on winning all their matches. At Victory Road, and uh, proving that they're here to stay. Of course, that does it does become you know we do find out officially officially that it is going to be Eddie Kingston and Samoa Joe one on one at Victory Road as well. So we'll have to see how that match ends up playing out. Then we got a forty six here. I mean, I did put this as a storytelling match, so that kind of makes sense. But ODB, the number one contender for the Knockouts Championship, gets a victory over Miss Natural in 624 by Pitfall to TKO. 
Miss Natural is a local talent. I just I wanted to, ODB to get a decisive victory um, before her match this weekend. Uh, 48 from ODB, 30 from Natural. Not really anything meaningful with the match. Uh, it's what happens after the match that's significant. Because afterwards, she gets jumped by the beautiful people. But the playing kind of backfires. It's one of those things that like she gets knocked down. And then Sky and Love, for some reason, decide to pose. And ODB isn't really knocked down, like knocked out. She's just she just got knocked down, so she gets up. And the two kind of churn. You know, it's one of those things like the crowd's cheering. And Sky and Love are like posing. They're like, oh, yeah, you're cheering for us. And then and then uh, um, ODB kind of steps up right behind them, kind of taps them both on the shoulder. And they're like, you know, trying to push her away. She taps them again. And then Love kind of, you know, Sky's still posing over while Love kind of turns around and just all of a sudden has a shocked look on her face. She gets laid out. And before ODB can get her hands on Velvet Sky, Velvet Sky dash, you know, quickly gets out of the ring and runs most of the way up the ramp. ODB then hits her finisher on OD, on Angelina Love before staring down Velvet Sky ahead of the match this Sunday. 50 rating here for this. Uh, lost heat for the storyline, but that's fine. We'll We'll make it up. So there you go. ODB standing tall ahead of the match this Sunday. I apologize. I'm a yawny boy t uh, this morning while I'm recording this. Uh, then we've got a match between Chris Hero and Rhino. Chris Hero wins in 942 by pinfall to Rory Nobo. 71 rating for the match. 63 from Hero. 56 from Rhino. Pretty good stuff there. Got the crowd hotter. Um, pretty good way to get these two in the ring. Hero gets a decisive victory. Uh, you know, really good match. But afterwards, there's a weird little thing that happens. Uh, as you see with the, the storyline name that's there. <laughs> uh, afterwards, the House of Truth jump Chris Hero until Jimmy Jacobs comes running down, which is a bit surprising. Um, but it's still kind of a three-on-two uh, disadvantage. And that's when Rockstar Spud hits the ring and helps make the save as well. The faces end up standing tall at the end of it. So, what? <laughs> what? What? Oh, okay. Jimmy Jacobs and Rockstar Spud just made the save for Chris Hero against the House of Truth? Not sure what's going on with that, but uh, we're changing his gimmick. He still has the lackey gimmick for when he was the heel with EC3. So, we're changing it to a Rockstar underdog gimmick. Great rating. Nice. Um, so yeah, so now Rockstar Spud and Jimmy Jacobs are making the save for Chris Hero. It, what? <laughs> We're not sure what's going on with that, but, uh, we'll have to find out in future impacts. What is, uh, what's happening with that? Go to a commercial break, come back, and we've got a 72 rated matchup that sees Bobby Roode defeat T. Gray Uno 949 by pinfall to payoff. 70 from Bobby Roode, 53 from T. Gray Uno. They have great chemistry. That's interesting to see. Uh, but there you go. 72 for this one here. Uh, it does get announced during this match, continuing on the really weird stuff. Uh, it does get announced during this match that on the pre-show for Victory Road, it will be the All Night Express, Kenny King and Rhett Titus of the House of Truth, taking on Jimmy Jacobs and Rockstar Spud. I... Okay. <laughs> Sure, random ass match there, but that's thing. That's the thing that's happening. So we're gonna have to, you know. Well, I guess we'll see more this Sunday as to what's going on with that. But seventy-two here for this as Bobby Roode, who uh, is not set to have a match at the pay per view, um, gets a victory here on Impact. Has a nice little match up here with Tigriano, but he does get the victory. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, these two just might have had one of the best segments we've ever had in this save so far. Um, Cole Cabana and Jimmy Jacobs in a 92 rated segment um, basically just have kind of dueling promos. You know, it's one of those things you've seen me do it in, in like other uh, saves so far where it's like a little bit of a video package for Colt and then Colt's kind of talking. And a little bit of a video package highlights for Jimmy for uh, Jay Lethal. Why do I keep wanting to call him Jimmy Jacobs? Uh, for Jay Lethal, and then you know he's talking kind of thing. 
Cole Cabana kind of talks about how, he, you know, he was a tag team champion here, but he's focused on becoming a singles champion, and he plans on doing so at Victory Road. Jay Lethal just kind of says that he's been the face of the, of the X Division for a while now. He is going to remain the face of the, of the X Division, and that he's going to take care of Cole Cabana and send him back to being a comedy player uh, around here. So, 92 rating. My God. They may end up having a pretty good match at Victory Road, that's for sure. But there you go. Gain T for the storyline with his 92 rated promo. We get 66 as we see the American Wolves defeat the Bravado Brothers in 946 when Edwards submitted Lance with a, an Achilles lock. David Richards was seven shoulders above everyone else. He had a 75. 59 from Eddie Edwards and 36 from Lance and 35 from Harlem. Um, yeah, David Richards randomly looking really good in this. That's kind of weird. I I don't remember it being that big of a jump before, but all right. 66 rating here for the match, though. Good stuff there. Afterwards, the Briscoes hit the ring. The Wolves are celebrating. The Briscoes hit the ring. Of course, last week we saw a little bit of a teaser, and then we kind of hear it from Tanay himself during this, during this little bit right here that it has been become official, that Daredevil did make the match official after last week. It is going to be the Briscoes versus the Wolves for the tag team titles at Victory Road. Uh, Briscoes kind of hit the ring. They kind of shake hands a little bit. But it's one of those things that, like, they shake hands, but they don't really, like, let go of each other's hands for a little bit. They're just kind of staring each other down for a little bit. And then the Briscoes kind of raise up the hands of the Wolves and all that. So it's a little bit of a teaser of, like, hey, you know, we're, we're you know, we're both uh, fan favorite teams. You know, we're, we have respect for each other, but... but uh, Still having a little bit of a teaser ahead of what's to come at Victory Road. So 55 rating here for this. Then we get 58 for a tag team matchup. The C's cheerleader Melissa and ha and uh, Kana. Boy, I'm all over the place with words right now. Uh, defeating Hikaru Shida and Kairi Hojo in 11-11 when Kana pinned Shida with a billikin. 58 rating for the match. 58 from Melissa. 56 from Kana. 42 from Shida and 39 from Hojo. Um... You know, I kind of thought it would be kind of interesting to see what to see if Shida and Kyrie had any possible chemistry together. Um, they don't have bad chemistry, so I don't know if I'd run with them as a tag team. But I also hadn't used them in a few weeks, so that was also kind of my mindset here too. Is one of Melissa and Kana to take on two face uh, knockouts who could present a fair a viable challenge, but would still end up taking the loss in the end. So that's why we had Kyrie and Hikaru in this. But 58 rating for this match is really good, honestly. I mean, I know Khan and Melissa in ring performances are good, but still really cool to see a 58 might actually help out with uh with them right now. And there's a lot of bonuses out of that too. She got an awful gimmick and Kyrie's still an inexperience. Those were the only penalties for that. Uh but as good as this match was, again, it's what happens afterwards that is a little bit more meaningful. Uh, because afterwards, I got a 38. That's what I kind of expected. Um, <laughs> Melissa and Kana look to go do more damage to Sheeta and Hojo after the match. Until Evie and, and uh, Luray hit the ring to chase them off. 38 rating here. Lost here for the storyline. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> it's advancing the storyline. That's what matters. So, you know, Evie and Candice coming to the aid of uh, Sheeta and Kyrie here. Um, I don't have plans for those two teams to face off at Victory Road. Melissa and Kana versus Evie and Luray. Um, I don't have plans for them facing off at Victory Road, so we will have to see in the future impacts what's next for this storyline. Then, we see Abyss defeat Juice Robinson, 754 by Pinfall Black Hole Slam. 43 from Juice Robinson, 73 from Abyss, 72 rain for the match. Pretty good stuff here. This just gets a quick victory. Um, more quickish. You know, it still went eight minutes, but he still got a, a good victory there. So there's that. Um, I did realize something, and that's why I just wanted to check the dirt sheet just now because uh, I wanted to see if it was going to make a note of it, but it did not. Um, so, slight spoilers. Uh, I was planning on getting Abyss into kind of a uh, push here in 2015 in-game. 
um, you know, more of like a getting him back up to the main event level kind of stuff. Uh, the problem is, is that he is starting to decline. His stamina is starting to go down. Uh, it's not enough where he's declining physically yet, but he's, his stamina is starting to go down. So give it another few months or so in game and he'll start getting declining physical ability uh, issues. And so I kind of have to take that little bit of a push. I was going to give him in a different direction then. Um, Because the idea was going to be that he was going to start being like a, you know, kind of really pushing, you know, that was the whole thing I've been teasing lately with like Daphne being like, I'm going to unlock his true, you know, the true monster within him kind of thing. And, and uh, and I got to take a little bit of backseat to that because he's going to start declining here shortly. So Um, I got to change direction with it basically. But I mean, it's all right. Yeah. It's all right. We'll figure out. I'll figure out exactly what I want to do with it and go from there. Uh, but seventy-two rating here for this. Pretty good stuff there. Then we get a fifty-nine rated segment, which honestly is not bad for what it is, especially with three people. The three people. <laughs> the three people who improvised well in this were the three people who I tried scripting along with the fourth person. But the fourth person didn't want to be scripted. So I put everybody on not I put everybody in this segment not to be scripted. And the person who didn't want to be scripted is the only person who didn't improvise well. Thank you, Magnus. Anyway. <laughs> a little rant over there. Uh Magnus and Mickey James are back in the office of Daredevil and, and Maria. And they're like, well, Victory Road's coming up. What what are we doing? We we want to we demand to be on the show. We demand to we are not going to be missing another pay per view. We demand to be booked in a match this Sunday. And Maria's like, you two are booked in a match this Sunday. You're you're in you're you're competing on the card this Sunday. And uh, Magnus is like, well, great. Who 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 is Mickey facing? And Maria's like, well, she's facing Brooke Tessmacher. Mickey's like, why do I have to deal with her? I took care of her already. I don't want to have to deal with her in a match. What the hell are you talking? You know, why Why is this a thing? But Magnus is like, you know what? That's fine. Mickey, you can you can kick Brooke Tessmacher's ass easily. No problem. Who am I facing? And that's when I'm like, well, you're facing Austin Aries. Magnus is like, why am I dealing with Austin Aries? I don't want to deal with him. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get away from him. I'm trying to get he's annoying the hell out of me. I'm trying to get away from him. And Maria's like, well, I, you know, that's that's just how it is. And uh Magnus and Mickey are like, alright, fine. Well, we we gotta go prepare for our for our, our individual matches there at the pay-per-view then. And uh I kind of pipe up. Before they, you know, they start to turn around to try to leave the office. And I'm like, well, well, hold on. Hold on. Who said individual matches? And they turn back around. They're like, what are you talking about? And Maria's like, well, it is true. Mickey, you are facing Brooke. And Magnus, you are facing Ares. But you could also end up facing the other person, too. Because at Victory Road, it's going to be a mixed tag team matchup. Magnus and Mickey James versus Austin Aries and Brooke Tessmacher. And they're like, and uh, Magnus like, you know, trying to, he seems a little annoyed with this, but he's like, you know what? Fine, fine, fine. That's, that's actually, you know what? That's even better because myself and Mickey, we have that chemistry. Aries and Brooke, they probably haven't even interacted before this. We have no problem with this. We'll we'll kick their asses at Victory Road. And then they walk out. So 59 rating here. As we find out, it's going to be Magnus and Mickey James versus Austin Aries and Brooke Tessmacher at Victory Road. So that should be very interesting to see. Then after that, our air quotes here, main event of the night. Good 63. I was hoping for a little bit better. I don't know what happened here. 
I was hoping for a bit better. Um, I mean, I, you know, I know that these two aren't Jeff Hardy penalties for low morale. I know that these two aren't great right now, but I was still hoping for a little bit better. So this, this impact might be hurt a little bit. Nevertheless, Jeff Hardy gets a victory over Brian Kendrick in 1042 by pinfall to Swanton Bomb. 63 from Jeff Hardy, 51 from Brian Kendrick. Just, you know, a good back and forth match between these two. Um, yeah, Jeff Hardy has his match against EC3 at Victory Road. Uh, although Vic EC3 not here tonight. That is why we're not seeing EC3 be involved in this match at all. Uh, and Brian Kendrick, you know, he doesn't really have anything for Victory Road right now. He's still got that uh, weird thing going on. Speaking of the weird thing going on afterwards, the weird thing continues. As Chris Saban hits the ring and attacks Brian Kendrick after the match until Paul Lennon runs down and makes a save, um, chasing off Chris Saban. Alex Shelley not here tonight. He's working for New Japan, so it's just Saban by himself. Um, Paul Lennon then kind of, you know, offers to help Kendrick up, but Kendrick's Kendrick uh, kind of gets up on his own. He's like, you know, he we don't know what he's saying, but he, he clearly doesn't seem like he wants... Like he was, you know, wanting to thank London for the help, and he walks off himself. So, still kind of a weird situation with Brian Kendrick right now as to whether, you know, what's going on with him. But 53 here for this. Um, but there is one final segment to the show, and that is a 71 rated segment. The C's. AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, and James Storm being attacked backstage by the Beatdown Crew. They try to fight back, but it is a five-on-three scenario. The numbers are too much. And as security comes running in to try to help, you know, to try to separate both sides, uh, the beatdown crew, you know, are kind of standing tall there, and MVP kind of shouts out, we'll see you boys on Sunday before they walk off. So we end Impact with seeing AJ Styles, Samojo, and James Storm being helped by... Uh, well, we see we see Impact end with AJ Styles and James Storm being helped by some medical professionals, but they try to help Samoa Joe, and Joe just gets up and he is pissed and just goes tearing off after the beatdown crew. So Joe's you know bloody at this point, but he is tearing off after them as Storm and Styles are being helped out too. So did the beatdown crew just kind of guarantee that they're going to get victories at Victory Road here? We will have to see. Seventy one rating here for that. Show gets a seventy two rating. That's not bad at all. That is better than I expected, honestly, especially with that the main event match being a 63. We had three matches on the show that were better than our main event. <laughs> Four matches on the show, sorry. Yeah, it is what it is. Uh, still gained a popularity in nine regions. 72 rating. I'll take it. I'm not complaining about that. I'll take it. Uh, pretty good stuff there. As we continue to um, advanced storylines ahead of this Sunday. So, I will quickly run down the show before we look into everything else. The show for this Sunday on Victory Road. On the pre-show, we have the All-Night Express taking on Jimmy Jacobs and Rockstar Spud in a what-the-hell-kind-of-a-match-is-this kind of thing. Uh, we also will probably have on the pre-show because I can't trust it on the main show, even though I'd like to have it on the main show. We will have the Canadian Ninjas versus the Sexy Purple Thunder Sisters for the TNA Knockouts Tag Team Championships. Then on the main show itself, in no particular order, we will have Austin Aries, Brooke Tessmacher versus Magnus and Mickey James. We will have a match that I that did become official, but I didn't really announce it. It was one of those things that got announced by the commentators during the show, as it will be bad influence. Christopher Daniels and Kazarian taking on Adam Cole and Roderick Strong in a tag team matchup. For the X Division Championship, it will be Cole Cabana versus Jay Lethal. We have D'Angelo De Niro versus AJ Styles. We have Eddie Kingston versus Samoa Joe. We have Ethan Carter III versus Jeff Hardy. For the Knockouts Championship, ODB versus Velvet Sky. And then for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship, James Storm versus Shelton Benjamin. Those are the matches announced for the show. We will have to see how it ends up playing out. There still might be some other stuff that pop up on that show, but those are the matches for the show as of right now. Ratings for the night. Just shy of 1.4 million people watching Impact this week. We got a 72. NXT had a 56. Saw Corey Graves and Camacho defeat Tyler Breeze and Nick Dinsmore in the main event there. Uh, FIP 
had a 55. Saw Trent Beretta defeat AR Fox and Rob Echoes in a cage match for the FIP Florida Heritage title. So that's kind of cool. Uh, we had a 49 from Ring of Honor. I saw Scott Steiner defeat Colin Holini in the main event. <laughs> that's, uh, that's something. And 46 for WXW. I saw the Sumerian Death Squad defeat Double the Trouble by DQ in the main event. There's Zack Sabre Jr. working too. Um, yeah, interesting stuff there. Bobby Lashley, man, I got rid of him because I didn't really have much for him. Like, I couldn't come really come up with a lot for him over. And now he's just, like, randomly been getting just freaking great on the indies. Or whatever, like, outside of TNA. Like, I thought he was also going to start declining, and he hasn't. Um, so, that's kind of crazy. So, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't plan on bringing him in. Especially, I don't plan on bringing him in to join the beatdown crew, that's for sure. Uh, but I don't really plan on bringing him in, but, you know, it, interesting stuff there, I suppose. Uh, Explosion, nothing really of note happened on it. Um, the Aussie Idols, Casey Cassidy and Jesse McKay defeated a couple local talents. Uh, Red Dragon defeated Crazy Steve and Chance Prophet. Um, it was one of those things that uh, Abyss wasn't there, so some local worker stepped up to team up with Crazy Steve, and they ended up having some issues. Crazy Steve ended up turning on him and walking out of the match. Uh, Santana Garrett defeat Miss Na defeated Miss Natural, who we saw taking a loss to ODB as well. Uh, again, Miss Natural not under contract. She's just a local talent. And then the main event saw Juice Robinson, who had that match against Abyss. He got a victory over Mike Bennett. Um, yeah, as you see there, legitimately explosion is nothing to know anymore. It's literally just, I'm, I'm literally just using it to try to get some unimportant talents on over. Um, as you see there, you know, Aussie idols, red dragon, Santana, Garrett getting victories over local talents. Uh, just trying to get, uh, get them over a little bit more, that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, so there you go. That is TNA for this week. And, uh, in a couple of days, we will see you again on the series. For Victory Road. That should be a very good show in itself. So thank you all for watching. Definitely appreciate it. We will see you this Sunday for the next episode in the series. And on the channel, we will see you tomorrow for yet another video.